What's going on? Let's talk about some weird time signatures today. We're not talking about irrational time signatures or anything like that, but we are going to talk about big time signatures. 14 beats per measure, 34 beats per measure. What does this stuff actually mean and how can we be sure that we're in 14 and not in 7? So that's what we're going to get into. Spoiler, it's asymmetry. But let's get into it with a couple of fundamental topics that we need to establish first. The first one is fundamental groove. What does that mean? It means taking the groove, which is the thing that tells you what time signature you're in, and kind of stripping it down until you only have downbeats and upbeats, which would sonically be represented by a low thing and a high thing, probably a bass drum and a snare. The second thing is a little bit of a different perspective on what time signatures actually mean. Because notation-wise, we can say that the top number is about how many beats per measure, and the bottom number is about what kind of note gets a beat. But that doesn't really tell us anything about what the difference between 7-4 and 14-8 is, for instance. Um, but we know that mathematically equivalent time signatures are not always actually equivalent. Like 3-4 and 6-8, they're not the same thing, even though they are mathematically. So what gives? What gives is that the bottom number is telling you a little bit more. It's telling you not only what type of note gets a beat when you're notating it, but it's also telling you what kind of beat the top number is talking about, whether it's an actual beat or a subdivision or a second layer subdivision or a third layer subdivision. And that's the key here. Um, and that's actually the difference between 6-8 and 3-4, which is a pretty common question when people are first understanding what time signatures mean. They're like, why are 6-8 and 3-4 different? They're mathematically the same thing. Well, 6-8 is what people made when they realized I don't have a way to say 2-4 with a triplet feel without using tuplets for the entire song. Nobody wants to write tuplets for the entire song. Nobody wants to read tuplets for the entire song. So they say, okay, we're going to take our two beats and multiply it by the subdivision of three to get six so that we have enough resolution for what we want. But then those six beats aren't the actual beats, so we'll convey that by putting the bottom number as an eight, which conveniently makes the notation eighth notes. Now that's not necessarily historically how it happened, but it's a good way to understand what time signatures are really telling you. So now that we've got those things, let's hop in and start making ourselves some 14, 16, and 34, 32. Let's do it. So asymmetry is the key here, but what exactly does that mean? I'll show you with this measure of six, eight. Pretty simple, right? I think most people would agree that's a 6-8 measure. So let's take out the offbeats because that's not part of the basic groove. Now you'll notice that it's asymmetrical. The first half is a downbeat. The second half is an upbeat. They're not the same. Oh, wow. But that's the important thing here, right? It's asymmetrical. And that's how you know that it's not two measures of 3-8. It's one measure of 6-8. Now this is what I would call 1416. The way I know that is for two things. First of all, I know it's not 78 because it doesn't fit into the grid of 78. So 1416 and 78 are mathematically the same, but this is the fundamental groove. And notice how this downbeat, this kick drum is not on any of the quote unquote 7 beats if this was a 78 measure. The other thing is that it is asymmetrical as you'd expect. This is one way of feeling 716, and this is a different way. They're different, so it's 1416, not two measures of 716. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, you can have parts of the fundamental groove that aren't on the beat. You can have parts of the fundamental groove on off beats. That's, that happens all the time in 4-4, right? Well, here's the thing. This is not necessarily 1416, but it can be considered 1416, whereas this cannot be considered 1416. That's 7 8. There's no way around it. That's 7 8. But you could consider this 1416. You could also say it's 7 8. Now, I know I said earlier, here's how we know it's not 7 8. But really what I mean by that is here's how we know it can be 1416 and it's not necessarily 78. Alrighty, we have arrived. Here it is, 3432, or what we could call 3432. Um, it is asymmetrical over the halfway point and it has stuff on the grid of 34 that wouldn't fit onto the grid of 17. Here it is.
Very, very weird. Now let's add in those off beats. Oh, so wonky, so weird. I hate it and I love it. Man, 3432 is so weird, so cool, but yeah. So again, the fundamental principles here for making large time signatures that have an even number on the top is that they should be asymmetrical over the halfway point in their basic groove. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. This video, just like any other video I make about music, is about finding truth, right? It's about finding truth about music. And, you know, I come from, uh, you know, kind of an amateur, unorthodox perspective on a lot of these things because I don't have any formal training in music theory or anything like that, but I still think it's really interesting and a good journey to take to find truth about music like this. But why should we even try to find the truth? Why, why should we seek the truth about anything? It's an interesting question. And I tackle it over on my other channel called Thoughts in the Crossfire, which is a brand new channel I just made, only one upload, and that's tackling that very question. And I have tons of ideas for that channel, so there's going to be tons of content on there in the future, and the future content is probably going to be more controversial than just why should we seek truth, like everybody agrees that we should try to find the truth, but I'm going to be talking about some stuff that you might disagree with. So come and discuss with me over there, and uh, thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.